Chicago Bears Breeze. What is going on? It's your boy Jordan JC back again. And today's going to be a fun one because we are going to get into Chicago Bears offseason grades. As of now, currently, we know that the uh, uh, NFL draft is coming up. And so, baby, there will be some grades based on how they pick in the draft. But as of right now, we're going to really touch on the free agency moves that the Bears have made, whether it be tradings, uh, uh, re-signings, contract re-signings, whatever the case may be, we're going to get into it right now. So now it is time to get that chalk out, get the get the ruler out, get that red pen that you always wanted to get out. It is time for you to be the teacher and grade the Bears offseason right after this. So before we get into the content, just want to say continue to smash that subscribe button. I appreciate the, the support, all the loyalty you are showing me that is going to continue to motivate me as well to continue to push out content for you guys each and every day of this week. I'm trying to continue to stay consistent with this information, trying to keep it lively and also, you know, give some different content. We know this is around the same time where there's a lot of content that's geared towards, you know, the the, the drafts and, and Caleb Williams and things of that nature. So it could get a, get a little bit repetitive, but hey. Give me some ideas in the con in the in the uh, comment section as well. You know, I would I'm always welcome to uh, maybe getting some ideas from you guys and seeing what you all would like for me to uh, discuss. As always, I love being down there in the comment section with you all. Whether it's agreement or disagreement, I need all of it, and I appreciate just the dialogue that we have. So appreciate all of the support as well. Let's get into this content. So we are going to grade the Bears offseason and let's just get into it. Let me see what you all think at the very end of this. Let me see what grades you all come up with. Leave it in the comment section as always. And uh, yeah, let's start off with the first signing, the running back. From the Philadelphia Eagles, DeAndre Swift, who signed a three-year $24.5 billion deal to come here. Um, Personally, and I'm going to do this individually and then give my overall grade at the end, I would give Deon the DeAndre Swift signing a solid B+. Um, I'm not going to give it an A because, number one, I thought that there were other names out there at the time that we really keyed in on, whether it was Saquon Brock Barkley or uh, Josh Jacobs from the Raiders. I thought that those were two names that we really were going to key on if we were going to bring a running back into the building. I thought that we were okay at the running back position. You know, that's not really a, a, a position of need that we necessarily had to upgrade uh, before we signed Swift. But I thought that the addition of Swift made this room a little bit more talented. DeAndre is someone who can kind of do it all. He's a very good three down back. Uh, he's someone who can catch from out of the backfield. He's explosive, a little bit more faster than the likes of Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson. Um, his blocking is a little subpar, but I mean, that's pretty much the only deficiency in his game. He's coming off of a Pro Bowl season, going into his prime as far as age is concerned. And so these are all things that are positives with that signing. Not a bad signing as well, $8 million. When you see or compare the other signings, I believe Saquon Barkley got in the range of 11 to 12 million uh, to sign with the Eagles. And then uh, I can't remember what Josh Jacobs got, but that was a very, very, you know, decent signing, decent number, decent amount of money that you're getting for someone who is still in his prime or going into his prime. So I love that. So I'm giving it a B plus just because I thought there were other better options out there. Moving on to the re-signing, cornerback Jalen Johnson. I give this an A plus. You re-signed him to a four-year, $76 million deal, $54.4 million guaranteed. That was some who I, someone who I did not want to see walk. I mean, you're talking about homegrown talent development from Chicago Bears being drafted here uh, out of Utah. I thought that Jalen Johnson continued to show and improve his ability to be that that top cornerback, especially in the league, not just on this team, but being a top cornerback in the league. And by all accounts, According to PFF stats, he was the number one cornerback in the league. You're talking about somebody who can shut down his opponent, whether it be a wide receiver one or not. Uh, you're talking about somebody who improved on his takeaways, which was really the question mark about whether or not Ryan Pose was going to keep him around or not. And that kind of money that he was looking for in that range of maybe 18 to 20 million dollars or more to kind of uh, uh, re restructure the cornerback market. He, he definitely deserved his contract, and it was actually a pretty good one. I believe that's around $19 million per year, a little bit over $19 million per year. So that's not something that's going to hurt the bank. The Bears had money to spend with the uh, departure of Eddie Jackson and, and uh, 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 can't remember the other offensive tackle's name at the moment. But 
those were the those are the people that you know when you saw them leave uh in eddie jackson and then you also saw the other lineman left guard leave uh those were the numbers that that kind of shored up money so that we could put it into a a, a negotiation with jalen johnson you saw that work out uh it got done quick they they actually had signed him initially to that uh 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 uh, cap of, I believe it was 19 or 20 million at first. And so giving him 19 million for the next four years, that's actually a very, very good deal for the Bears. So I give this an A plus because you're keeping somebody who's a number one cornerback lockdown uh, going into his prime as well, because he could be up for the, for another good contract as well uh, in the next four years. You also sound quarterback Brett Ripping, and I thought this was a good depth move as far as someone who has some experience in the league. You signed him to a one-year deal. Uh, uh, I hope I'm saying that name right. I say Ripping or Ripping, and I'm not sure if that's how you say it. But that was someone who I thought was a decent move as far as mentoring. If we get someone who's a quarterback, obviously a rookie quarterback that we're going to pick in the draft like Caleb Williams or someone else, then they need someone who's obviously had experience and can be that Monday through Friday quarterback that's going to mentor them, kind of show them the ropes of what it means to be a professional in the league. Not necessarily from a talent perspective, but just kind of knowing how to go about his business on the days off, the off-season workouts, and putting in the work, putting in the leadership qualities and the skills and the time to be that quarterback one. I think those are, are very good depth moves for the Bears. And so that was a good move. I'll give that a C. Uh, Matt Pryor, offensive tackle, signed to a one-year deal. I like this move. I give this a B uh, because this is something that was catered to the death on the offensive line. The, you talk about some of the deficiencies we've had. It was on the offensive line, especially when injuries started to kind of pile on uh, in the latter part of last season. You need some people who are going to be serviceable at the very least. You talked about all the issues that we had at center, whether it was the snaps, whether it was the ball protection or the, the just the protection of the quarterback and giving him enough time to kind of scan the field and throw the ball. Well, this is a very good signing and, and someone who has been uh, uh, serviceable and decent and, and, and a little bit above average in Matt Pryor. And so you love to see that upgrade. Uh, I believe this is someone who's not going to be a starter, but someone who can, you know, uh, spell the starters in spurts or come in when there's an injury and kind of hold his own. And so you love to see that signing. I also give that a C as well. Going to the tight end, Gerald Everett, two years, $14 million, $6.1 million guaranteed. Love, love, love this signing. You need a second tight end behind Cole Komet that you can rely upon. I think that Gerald Everett is a very underrated signing. I give this signing a B plus because he's someone who is very offensive minded. You saw the way that he played uh, with the Chargers. Uh, this is someone who is relied upon to, you know, be able to catch the ball, you know, in, in different intermediate routes. He's someone who is capable of getting you some good yards after catch as well. Uh, a decent blocker. He's aggressive in his blocking ability uh, in his pass blocking, run blocking ability. And so you love to see it. You know that Shane Waldron loves those, those two tight end uh, type of play calls and rotations. And so I think this is someone who is kind of a little bit in a, uh, in a different mold from Cole Komet, but they complement each other well. I, for myself, I thought that you know when we brought in uh, uh, the the uh, tight end from uh, Green Bay that I thought that he was going to be that that answer long term behind uh, Cole Komet and and it's it's just didn't work out and for whatever reason you saw that he had dropped some key passes some open passes and so uh, that that was something that I thought needed an upgrade as well and so you love to see that addition of Gerald Everett now safety. Got pickup of Kevin Bayard, two years, $15 million. I love, love, love this move. This also was another A-plus for me for various reasons. Kevin Bayard is someone who was established in this league, had plenty of Pro Bowl seasons, uh, a known name around the league, very, very aggressive tackler, violent in his pursuit. I love this person. He is also very good at takeaways as well. Uh, this was an upgrade to me because you talk about Eddie Jackson, his deficiencies in the latter part of his career. The past couple of years, he's just not been the same type of person. We knew Eddie Jackson to be a ball hawk, someone who you could rely upon to take the ball away, be in a position where you can get takeaways or even pass deflections. And it just didn't seem like it was there. And for me, I always said that if Eddie Jackson wasn't giving you that, then pretty much Eddie Jackson was a liability on the field because his tackling was not 
it wasn't aggressive. It wasn't really sure tackling the angles that he had to pursue towards defenders, you know, in, in, in the speed, like it, everything kind of just took a fall, a tail off. Ellie Jackson was never really known for his tackling where on the other hand, Kevin Bayard is known to be a tackler. And so that's what you want. And so despite him being a little bit more up in age, he still had some good years ahead of him. I think that Kevin Bayard is an upgrade alongside Jake Daquan Brisker. And so to me, that's an A plus. Jonathan Owen safety. So this is some 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 depth move as well. We just talked about the safety that's going to obviously start in Bayard. But Jonathan Owens, hey, I give this signing a B minus. Give it a little bit more of, of oh, you know what? I'm gonna give it a B just because this is Simone Biles' husband. We're gonna give it a B. We're gonna give it a little bit more of a grade up just because this is he's he's connected to the Olympian, and you know, maybe this is our Taylor Swift type of uh player that's on the team. So we're gonna get a lot of media coverage from that. But uh actually Jonathan Owens is not a, a, a bad player in his own right. Played on the Texans, uh, played on the uh Green Bay Packers as well. So glad that we snatched him from our hated rivals. But um, overall, this was a good depth signing. Again, safety is not necessarily a, a position that we need. You know, you got Bayard, you got uh, 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 Jaquan Brisker, you got some really good pieces already in that room. But this is, again, a good addition to that room where he can come in if someone gets injured and, you know, again, hold his own. We're talking about somebody who can start as well, who has the capability of starting. And so very good signing. Two years, $4.5 million for Jonathan Owens. Now, linebacker, Amin Agban Bamiga, or Onbog Bamiga. Hope I'm saying that right, too. One year's $2.1 million. Now, linebacker is another position where, again, this caters to death. I don't think that this was a necessary need. Our linebacking room is very good. Jack Sanborn, Noah Sewell, who I think is, is underrated. Of course, you got Edmonds and Edwards, who are the big names in our in our, in our our linebacking room. But just uh, this is someone who probably can also uh, 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 contribute to uh, special teams as well. And so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they use him. Again, good depth piece. You always need some people who can spell the starters in certain instances or if they go down with injury for a few games or, you know, for a few plays or whatever the case may be. This is somebody who is serviceable as well. So I give this a C. Coleman Shelton, the center, one year deal. I love this move. This is a B plus to me because at the time before we went into, which I'll bring up uh, 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 later, the other offensive linemen, at the time we needed a center. And, you know, this was someone who I think will or was going to start uh, outside of the other uh, center or I should say swing lineman that we uh got as well. But Coleman Shelton is someone who is uh, serviceable, has had starting experience, has had experience in the league. And at the very least, we always said, hey, we need a center outside of the ones that we had back, you know, uh, uh, in the previous year with Dan Feeney. Uh, uh, we had uh, uh, Cody Whitehair. That was the name that I was trying to remember earlier with Eddie Jackson being let go. Cody Whitehair. And then, of course, you had Lucas Patrick. Those were all failed when it came to the center position. Uh, it just seemed like they weren't very comfortable in snapping the ball to Justin Fields, you know, at the right angle. It, they weren't good at run protection or pass protection. It, everything just kind of took a, a fall off. And we need someone who's going to be there for the long term at center. Now, I'm not saying that Coleman Shelton is going to be the long term answer. Obviously, that could be addressed in the draft with the likes of maybe a JPJ, Cedric Van Pran. You know, you have some other names in the draft that, are, that could be long term answers. But this is someone who's good as of right now, could serve the team for maybe the next year or so and, and as there's a transition for maybe a rookie center that could be drafted to come in and kind of get his feet wet in the league and take over for the long term so i love this move again for me this is a b plus long snapper patrick scales i believe he is the most longest i believe he's the longest bear to newer bear uh he resigned to a one year one million dollar deal um this is just good because now we have some con continuity at that position you know patrick scales has done his thing and has done it well for a very long time and so there's nothing really bad to say about that long snapper patrick scales i mean i'm going to give this a plus just because he's been doing his thing forever and so you like the consistency and keeping him here you love that resigning now 
Offensive lineman Ryan Bates. This is the guy that I really, really liked coming from the Bills. This is someone who Ryan Poles wanted to get a few years ago, and uh, the Bills, I believe, matched the offer. Uh, and so now we have Ryan Bates, who's a swing lineman. He's had some experience at center. He's a left guard, right guard as well. So this is someone who can kind of spell a multitude of positions, whether it be Nate Davis or Tevin Jenkins. We know those guys have had issues, whether it be injuries or maybe time away for a leave of uh, for, for family issues with Nate Davis. Uh, so if that's the case this year, if there's any issues with those, positions, Ryan Bates is someone who I actually think is above average when it comes to block protection, a run protection, and pass protection as well, and also his experience at center. And so now you have two guys at center. I believe Ryan Bates is going to be the starting center from all accounts. I believe the Bears are going to give him the first stab at uh, being the starting center on this team. And so you love to see that. I give this signing a B plus as well, because again, this caters to the depth and then it caters to multiple a number of positions that can be addressed on the line uh, another offensive line and jake current again going to death i give this a c uh not too much i know about jake current but i know that he's a serviceable guard i looked a little bit up on him and so this is someone who again can be someone who can come in for a few minutes or spell someone in, in, again going to injury or just maybe a, a, a few plays out for uh exhaustion Again, good depth. You always need depth at the offensive line because you never know when somebody can go down. And that has always been an area of need for the Bears lately is the offensive line and protection. And so very good signing there. Now we're going to go to our defensive ends. We have a few people that we got out of the free agency, Jake Martin and Byron Coward. I'm going to kind of compare those, put put those two together. I give both of those signings a C plus because Jake Martin and Brian Coward are Decent, decent players. You look at a lot of the names on the defensive line that we have, Demarcus Walker, uh, uh, you know, Javon Dexter, Zach Pickens. Uh, uh, if we even sign Yannick Ngakwe again, that may be a decent pickup. But I believe that outside of Montez Sweat, these are some serviceable guys who can come in and kind of, you know, give, get some pressure on the quarterback as well. They're not necessarily, you know, big time players or anything of that nature. But again, the depth there is a very is very good for the defensive line. I believe that in the draft, we're going to address that, you know, with some more talent, possibly with that ninth pick if we're not trading back or later on in the draft, seeing as we only have four picks. And so I love those two signings. I'm going to give those two signings. I believe I said a C plus. So uh, you love that as well. Now, am I at the last? No, second to last pick, uh, 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 rather signing. So we re-signed or we brought back wide receiver Dante Pettis. I'm going to give this signing a B because I love what Dante Pettis brings or the, the ability that he brings in the special teams category. Um, he was okay and serviceable as a wide receiver in certain plays, but I believe his best role is in special teams as a return. You know how I felt if you've seen us talk on the Windy City Breeze. You know how I felt about Bayless Jones. Bayless Jones has is, is, is I believe, his time is done. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know why he's still on the team. Maybe now with the changes to the return game, maybe he could be more uh, uh, productive and maybe they, they he can he can kind of show what he was supposed to show coming out of Tennessee, but he's an older prospect. And so I think that Dante Pettis has a little bit better of a track record being around the league and being able to, you know, uh, get some good, good return yards, being a decent returner, uh, punt returner, kickoff returner. And so that's why I like this re-signing because he's already familiar with the team. here. He's already familiar with the lingo and the play calling and the style and the scheme. And so this is a decent signing as well. So I give that a beat. Now, the last name on my list is the best name, in my opinion, of this offseason. We were able to get free agent Keenan Allen from the Chargers, came out of nowhere. Of course, I'm going to give this an A-plus because Keenan Allen is by far one of the best tactician wide receivers in the game. I mean, you're talking about someone who's probably just as good as the best in the league, in my opinion, in Devontae Adams in route running, footwork, uh, knowing how to create space. These are all positives when it comes to the wide receiver that you want for a rookie quarterback to have on the team. I mean, this is a guy who will make life so much easier for the likes of a Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels or whatever direction we go in with the uh, signal caller. And so, you love to see it with Keenan Allen. Uh, still, uh, technically, still putting up very, very good. Not technically, he is putting up very, very good numbers. The guy is 32, and he's still doing his thing. And it, and it's not predicated off of. 
uh, uh, elite athleticism, elite speed, but the guy just knows how to play football. And that's what you want on your team is somebody who knows how to play football, is very good and adept at getting to those open areas and zone coverage or uh, uh, just making space enough for his quarterback just to feel easy and comfortable in the pocket and throwing it to him. He's a third down reliable threat as well because he's always getting open and, and getting those third down uh, uh, uh conversions. And so this is someone who is very, very good alongside DJ Moore. We talked about just the number of uh, uh, times we've had drop balls, whether it was uh, uh, from the receiving room or the tight ends, like it was just atrocious after a while. The only person you could rely upon was Cole Komet and DJ Moore as far as receiving is concerned. And so to have Keenan Allen and DJ Moore on the team, I mean, you're talking about two wide receiver ones on the team now. And so you love to see it a plus for this as well. So that wraps up the offseason for right now. Of course, we're going to get into the free uh, the, the draft very soon in the next couple of weeks. It is coming uh, very soon. And so uh, possibly we'll put another video out uh, as well on specifically the NFL draft grades, depending on who we pick. Uh, but what I give this offseason, I'm going to say a solid B plus. Solid B plus just because I thought there were still names out there that, as I mentioned earlier on with the running back room, I thought there were names that we were trying to going to get to make a bigger splash, whether it was Saquon or Josh Jacobs. I also thought that we were going to make bigger splashes in the defensive edge room, whether it was Daniel Hunter, DJ Wanham. Um, you had Jadavion Clowney out there. You had Chase Young. You had uh, a slew of names. I mean, of course, Chris Jones was going to get re-signed by the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, but I also thought maybe there was a chance for Justin Matabike to be mentioned on this team. Uh, you had a couple of other names as well. I mean, you had a lot of names that I thought that we may have overlooked. Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle. Uh, and so there were a few misses. There were a few times where I thought we could have addressed uh, uh, those certain positions with bigger names on the market, better, better talent. But I think overall, what really made this 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 a B plus for me is the depth uh, at the at the key areas of need, whether it be offensive line and defensive line. And then, of course, shoring up that safety position, we've got an upgrade there. Uh, we definitely had an upgrade at running back, I think, in Swift being a better overall back than Roshan and Khalil. And then, of course, you had Kevin Bayard, who's an upgrade over Eddie Jackson at this point in time in his career. And so you love to see it, and it's going to be fun to see what the Bears do uh, uh, in, in the uh, NFL draft. So stay tuned for that. We'll have some more grades. But, of course, I want to see what you all grade the Bears. Do you think it's better than a B plus? Do you think it is a B plus? Do you think it's worse than a B plus? What moves would you have liked to see the Bears uh, uh, make at the certain positions in this free agency? What names did you really think that we missed out on that you would have loved to, to make this grade even better? And uh, yeah, how would you grade the offseason? I'll be down there with you on the comment section as always. And as always, show some class on this video. Comment, like, subscribe, share this video with others. I'll see you guys on our next Bears Breeze.